Hi I am Dee and enough a warm welcome to this prize winners concert as part of the Keith TMSA Virtual Festival 2021. First off a huge thank you to everybody that entered, we had over 180 entries for our judges to sift through so a huge thanks for all the practicing, recording, the tackling with technology and getting them across to us. Thanks also to our adjudicators who had a really hard job this year going through all of our entries and we'll hear more from the judges later in the concert. So tonight the, uh, our prize winners concert as usual is sponsored by Alec Grant and Co as was our competitions and throughout the concert we'll hear from the adjudicators give their adjudication for each of the classes and then we'll hear from the winner. So first off tonight I'll hand over to our accordion adjudicator Neil Copeland for his adjudication. Hello everyone. Before I give my adjudication for the accordion classes, I'd like to thank the Keith TMSA Festival Committee for inviting me to adjudicate at this year's virtual festival. Congratulations are also due to the committee for pursuing a virtual festival. This is by no means easy and I hope that everyone will support the 2022 festival when it comes back live next year. I was a little disappointed that we only had three young competitors and no seniors in today's competitions. But the three competitors who submitted online entries were all very well prepared and gave very good performances, as I'm sure you'll agree. There was a variety of medleys from each of the competitors, which meant that trying to adjudicate them and come up with winners wasn't going to be an easy task. Thank you to all three competitors for making me work very hard this year. In reaching my final decision as to winners, I was looking for accurate playing, strong rhythmic playing, good technique, good control of the instrument and some very nice content on, from each of the medleys. That said then, my results for the junior accordion class at the 2021 TMSA Virtual Festival are in third place with 83 marks Rachel Lowe. In second place, with 84 marks, Abby Christie. And that of course means that our winner, with 85 marks, is Finn Hope. Congratulations to all our three competitors, and again, congratulations to the Festival Committee. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, my name's Anna Birch. Um, I'm the principal teacher of music at Keith Grammar, um, and I've been asked to do the judging for the traditional singing this year. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to go through the results for the the senior competition. Um, I must say, I had a brilliant time uh, sitting watching these all last night, um, and they were all of a really, really high standard. I was really, really enjoying myself. Um, so. Uh, yeah, great job to everyone involved. Um, so I'll start with third place, um, which is going to go to Annie Lennox, um, who sung the Pertin Glass. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I thought she had a beautiful tone, um, a great use of dynamics throughout, um, and really told the kind of story of the song through through her performance. Um, it was really, really lovely. It's a great job. Um, and then in second place, I've actually got two because they both came out with uh, 96 out of 100 when I was doing my marking. Um, so I've got Doug Hay who sung uh, Courting in the Stable and I just thought it was a, a brilliant performance. He kind of acted it out um, as he sung. It was lively and enjoyable um, kind of really natural in the way he performed um, and it was just great. Really enjoyed it. Um, on the other one in second place there was Neil MacDonald um, for similar reasons, it was a brilliant song choice. Um, I think it's called Two Sooks to Every Blah. <laughs> I might be wrong. Um, but he came on playing his harmonica and then performed the song brilliantly. It was really enjoyable. I thought his phrasing and timing was excellent. Um, it was just really, really good. And then in first place, I've got Iona Fife. Um, and it was just, it was beautifully sung. Um, the beautiful tone, really nice use of dynamics, uh, beautiful use of wee ornamentations in there. Um, just, yeah, beautifully sung. Her pitch was impeccable. It was really full of feeling in her performance and it was just a, a lovely song choice as well. Okay, thanks very much. At Middle Turkey there be a man and the neighbourhood of Ivy he had a bonny daughter fair, and her name was Bonnie Annie. Lord Fivey, he read by the door, for to that sweet taft is Annie, but his trumpet arrowed him afford, and his name was Andral Annie. Her mother cried her to the door, Come here to me, my Annie. Did he ever see sick up bonny loon land the trumpeter of Ivy? Nathan, she said, with sighing sore, does a lass for bonny Annie, for she durst not own that her hair to us won by the trumpeter of Ivy. And the first time that this couple met, it was in the words of Ivy. And his handsome face and his flattering tongue, seen one here to a honey. Met her father come to hear all this, and a letter wrote to Ivy to tell his daughter had been bewitched. By his servant and Alahami. Fin Fivey had the letter read, he caught for Andralami. Pray tell me, fair tis this ye've done, to Melotefdisahani. In wicked it I've played and appeared, nor thought to end. Jerani, for it's honest love that's won the heart, O Melotef de Zahani. But to Edinburgh he was sent, to break his tie with Annie, for they thought that she would soon forget her love for Andralahami. And the next time that Lord Fivey passed, he caught a sack to Annie, saying if he'd come, oh, higher kin, 
I would mock you, my ain lady. Says she, your lands are far and wide, and they are wondrous funny. But I would not leave my ain dear lad for all the land o' oh, Fivey. Then her feather bet her wondrous sore. We cruel strokes and money, and he's broke her back across a stone, all for loving and me. Oh, mother, mother, mark my bed, and lay my face to five for it's there I'll lie, and it's there I'll die. All for loving and me. Hi everybody, Craig Pike here with the adjudication for the poetry ten and under. Uh, now we had uh, we had a few competitors here, so uh, thanks very much indeed to everybody for your contributions. First of all, we had Amy McRae, who told us a story of Jock and Jean. Now, Amy, you you did really really well here. Your voice was expressive. You clearly put thought, considerable thought, into the language and the delivery as well. That was that was self evident. So well done for that. Voice was expressive, thoughtful use of actions as well to support the content of the poem and the performance. And that is something that as you get older, that will come even more naturally as well. The, the more poetry that you, that you come across, that you uh, choose to deliver, uh, you will increase your confidence at picking the actions to go with the delivery as well. So Amy, well done. Then we had Anna. Anna, we had up the stairs. A, a very bright start for sure. A really, really bright start. Um, and you tried really hard, Anna, with the expression and the actions. And again, your confidence will increase as you get older as well. So Anna, up the stairs, well done. And, and keep it going. You know, Keep it going. Um, Cameron. Cameron Simmers, life's little ups and doons. Um, Excellent diction, I thought, Cameron. You, you heard every single word. Uh, it was so clear. Every consonant, every vowel. A terrific projection uh, and, and use of the language as well. Excellent. Really, really good. Um, excellent narrative. And this one was uh, even trickier because you had to put in a change of accent. And changing accent mid-poem... Uh, and effectively taking on a different character um, isn't easy to do. That's not easy. Um, but you did it very, very well. So um, well done, Cameron. I thought that was tremendous. And you're a good pace throughout the piece as well. So spot on. Um, Ethan, Ethan Milne, then gave us the story of the werewolf. Um, a great character piece. Uh, this, um, you really tried to get the character of the werewolf out in terms of the use of the actions. That's really important in, in, in something like this, the use of the actions to put across the character. And something like a werewolf is a creature that Abdi Kens, Abdi Kens, a werewolf is meant to do and meant to look like. Um, so well done, Ethan. I thought you delivered that really, really well. Good accent and delivery as well. And then we had Lewis, Lewis Simmers, the Rat of the Bakehouse. Um, excellent delivery, a great use of the language, great accent as well, um, and great expression. Um, it is one that there, there was a, clearly a rhythm to the poem as well that you were, that you were trying to, to uh, stick to. Um, and uh, you moved that on very well in terms of Pace Lewis. That was a good, that was a fun one. I'd never heard that before, and and I thought that was a, a fun choice as well. So, taking everything into account, um, first thing I'll say is well done to all of you. Um, you know the the quality of the delivery at 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 your age was very very good, and again as I've said with other adjudications, will only increase in confidence as you get older and actions and things like that will become more natural. So um, in third place, I'm going to have Ethan Milne. Ethan, you're in third place. In second place, 
I've got Lewis, uh, Lewis Simmers with the bake house, the story about the bake house, um, which I really enjoyed as well. And in first place, with life's little ups and downs, Cameron Simmers. As I say, I thought your delivery of that piece was very, very good indeed. Thank you and well done to you all. Little Ups and Dunes by Laz Wheeler Gordon McGordon, a fine kind of lad, was a rare sort of fella, and they are that bad. But he had a problem, this like a balloon, for whenever he sneezed, his trousers fell down. For out in the playground, the coins were the worst, they'd throw dust at Gordon and wait till he burst. We are muckle, a tissue. Sign look we are here, as pure Gordon's trousers dropped down to the fleer. To them it was a, just a bit of a lark, as they all stood and laughed at the tail of his sark. His family affronted, did they often gang out. They were feared he develop a bubbly snoot. It was better, they thought, to abide out of the kirk, and at school he was getting behind in his work. His mother sought help for the doctor a richt, that he could do nothing, just try as he might. They sound tried a teacher, the hitty, the Johnny, they even brought in a psychiatrist manny. He harumphed, and he havered, and he scratched his head, and so he declared that this was indeed the most curious case I have had. I suppose the cure is it's obvious he must stop wearing clothes. That's it, Gordon said. This is really the limit, as he pulled up his trousers and tucked in his simit. But his problem was solved by his grinning, you see. I remember, my lad, that you're Scottish like me. Think about that, and you'll suffer nay mair. And Granny was right. Gordon has me a care. He can sneeze while I without fear or guilt. Or when Gordon gaze out, he gaze out in his kilt. I'd just like to say well done to the competitors in the 10 and under class. It's fantastic to see Burns at that age standing up and giving it their all and playing the set. And uh, I hope you all keep going into the future as well. So thank you very much for your sets. A um, couple of things just to go over. When you're starting off, it's really important to hold your bow right down near the frog. Although it feels heavier, um, it gives you a better balance and you get more bow that you're able to use. So um, make sure that you're holding your bow right down at the frog there. And um, that your fiddle is even further up on your shoulder. Although, again, it seems easier to hold your fiddle here. What it means is you don't have much room in your arms. And if you hold up your fiddle slightly further on your shoulder, then it opens up the space here and it opens up the space here and it makes you able to get much clearer bows when you play. So that's just a couple of points to, to work on in the future. Um, so to say the results, in third place, um, I was very close between third and second, but in third place I've got Emily. So well done Emily, really nice set, um, good join between the tunes. Um, just keep listening out for your intonation. So before you start, take just a second or two to make sure that your hands are in the right place and that you're happy with your bow before you play. So don't just go straight into it. Just take a couple of seconds, just double check everything and then play. And that'll really help you um, prepare for the set. In second place, I've got Holly. So well done, Holly. Um, really nice two tunes. Uh, your intonation's slightly improved, but keep listening all the time. And the same goes, just take a couple of seconds before you start just to set up. Um, and that leaves the winner in this class, which is Andrew. Um, very mature playing for 10 and under. I enjoyed this set. Nice to see vibrato coming through um, and a nice link between all the sets. So um, well done again.
Like an update, it's Modern Sybarite here and I'm here to judge the Keith Festival Bothy Ballad competition. 2021 judging on a remote basis has been probably very challenging. Still a great honour, still a great privilege. But my goodness, I missed seeing Abdi in person, I missed the audience participation and I missed the atmosphere. But delighted to be part of the competition, delighted that all the entries embraced technology and were game to put in their entries and really well done because it must have been difficult for some of them. In the junior competition, we only had one entry, which was Caitlin Adams with the book and Plumen. Well done, Caitlin. I've heard you saying many times before, great for you to put in your entry, great to keep the competition alive and well done. So one entry in the junior both a ballad competition, which was Caitlin Adams with the book and Plumen. Well done. Come, my jolly plume, and let it work among the gun. Come, listen to my story if you want to hear some fun. I'm nae so young as I used to be, some say I've had my fling, but I feel just like a tiny in a hole. Then I begin to sing, oh, little to a little I to a little I'll call your horse, I'll sort you now, I'll bring her a ghost day. I'm as happy as a lark fade on to dark, singing of the day. Oh, little to a little I to the little day. A telling flea in me ear, kid, come listen for I say. A money spirk and I would work a pair of ten a day. Or I could fool my queen, a man who fairly girt my grief. Says I, oh man, for I come fae. We fool my queen, a grief. Oh, little for little lie, oh, to the little lay. I'll call your horse, I'll sort you now, I'll bring her a ghost day. I'm as happy as a lark fade on to dark, singing all the day. Oh, little for little lie, oh, to the little lay. I bought it for a sex month at a place they called Bulkian. When I get him, the bought the lads, they took me for a bairn. With horny hands, they ate buzz buds, the bought the flare, they have it. With shiny beads, I tramped the spots. And says I liked my chabot, oh, little for little I roll, to the little lay. I'll call your horse, I'll sort your night, I'll bring out a ghost day. I'm as happy as a lark fade on to dark, singing all the day, oh, little for little I roll, to the little lay. The night I married Mary Ann, I got me saff a foo. When the minister started to die, the knock that always I had to do. He says, "Fit as you knew my man, and have ye got the ring? Well, you should have seen the money's face. When I began to sing, oh, lot of a little I roll, to the little lay. I'll call your horse, I'll sort your night, I'll bring a rock astray. I'm as happy as a lark fade on to dark, singing all the day, oh, lot of a little I roll, to the little lay. The next competition is the Alt Gowrie Poetry Competition. And this is to be a Doric poem written by anyone aged 13 and over, which may be on any subject, but must be the entrant's own work. The judge was Caroline Fowler, and she said that the words flow for the poet's pen, say fluently, and paint a picture that, to me, is music and verse. The winner made a goodies with say many authentic Doric words in his anthology of work. He lived through a great deal of personal loss myself. This beautiful, powerful, poignant and highly emotive poem spoke to me through the first time that I read it and was chosen as a winner straight for the heart. So, in third place, we had a third equal. It's Jim Brown with Fish Day in Strathdawn, along with Margaret Johnston, Bonnie Maggie Lyne. We also had a second equal. It was John Strachan with Knipe and On and Liz Crystal 
with memories of when I was just a little quine. And in first place, the overall winner for Outstanding Poetry in the Alt Gowrie Poetry Competition, it's George Philip with some thoughts on a Kintra Symmetry. My name is George Philip. I am Huntley born and educated and I am 84 years old. First, let me thank everybody on the Keith Festival Committee for their great effort in bringing about this event. I am grateful too for being chosen as a poetry winner and for my prize and for the kind words of encouragement. My poem consists of seven and three line verses with rhyming in the first and second lines. There are at least 70 words that would not be used in an English poem. Here are some of them. A yet is a gate, huds is holds, a snake is a latch, roost is rust, nearer is narrow, cussed leerstins are faded greystones, a sclant is squint, gowden is golden, screeve is a piece of writing, mowed girth is mowed grass, and fa is who. I mentioned Père Lachaise. This famous cemetery in Paris is said to be the most visited in the world, and some of the paths there are more like roads. I shall now read the poem. Some thoughts on a kindred symmetry. The iron yet huds in, huds out. The lifted snack lets in, lets out, and breaks the colour except for roost. A heat, a smeary gravelled grid, on nearer paths that mark ne bid to match the eaves of Père la Chaise. Some cousin Lairstein's stand a sclint, all age his mother greyness bent, but Blakestein flunked their golden screeve. One aft sees floors meant for the deed, like lilies and roses, some fight or need, say lovely laid on green mountgers. Bereaved folk heed for a grave, and far among them does the crave for a last sight with them no gain. But cheers, the bells deep burst with song, the summer sun shines head and lamb, and sick a beast hangs o'er the land. It's true there's shadows in the sun and hurt, but mine afore this earth we pert, again no rest can lift the soul. This is the adjudication for the senior instrumental. And we had two competitors and three entries here, one lady playing two instruments. There was a tenor recorder, a melodeon and the piano. It's very difficult to compare when you've got such a, a diversification of instruments like this. So I'll just comment on each one and in the end I just awarded the marks for the best playing and uh, all my things I took into consideration. So Kirsty Lowe on your tenor, um, I was going to say a caution, tenor recorder. It was well played slow airs in 3-4 time and very good use of ornamentation. Try not to breathe in the middle of phrases and take care not to cut the value of the note before you do breathe. I think though a wee bit of variety in your tempo might have um, given it a wee bit more interest there. Besides everything was just the same tempo but well done anyway. Trish Santer with a melodeon. I like the way in which you introduced your tunes. A good choice of slow air. Lovely tune. Take care that the use of the bellows doesn't cause jerking in the melodic, melodic line. But of course, not knowing the technicalities of the instrument too well, this is maybe inevitable. It might be better for a competition to choose a different piece that doesn't have such a smooth line, you know. Um, and then Terebus. Uh, yes, an effective ornamentation at the cadences. Terebus was a good march tempo and again the addition of the left hand added variety, although you're limited because you only have eight bass notes. Try not to clip some of the notes. John Stephen, this was a good stress speed tempo, good use of the left hand again given the limitations of the wee box. Then we move on to your piano and Australian Ladies was very accurately played. However, I think you could have had more variety in the left hand chords because the piano, you've got all the scope in the world here. It's not like your, your wee box. Um, so maybe instead of... Try not to use the same bass note a 
successive amount of times, you know. Right, so just ex try to explore more chords because you're just uh, using the basic ones. Your slow air was uh, sensitively executed with a good use of rubato. That's just ebb and flow of the phrases. But I think when you're playing a slow air, once would really be enough. Overall, try to explore a wider range of harmonies for your left hand, although the rhythmic aspect of the accompaniment was well done. It was very fluid. Now, um, Kirsty, you played all your tunes in a set, as I say, although they were the same tempo. Trish, you switched off between each one. And had you played them successively, it would have been too long, really too long. So if you're doing this um, in person, um, with, you know, not virtually, you're appearing in person, you would need to uh, curtail the length of the set. Otherwise we lose interest. But I based my adjudication on the, the um, how well the playing was done. So Kirsty, I gave you 82. Trish's Melodian, 85, and you've won with your piano with 86 marks. Thank you very much, both of you.
going to carry on with the uh, singing uh, competition. So we're now at the 13 um, and unders. Um, and again, it was really, really enjoyable um, performances watching the all the entries. Um, so we'll start with in second place. So we've got Kirsty, uh, Kirsty Simmers. Um, and she sung Flower of Scotland. I thought she had a lovely tone. It was very tuneful and just overall a, an enjoyable performance. It was very, very nice. Um, and in first place, we've got Ellen uh, Lar Largue, um, who sung Scots Wahey. Hey. Um, I just thought it was an excellent performance. She really kind of acted out the song as she sung. Um, lovely pitch, full of feeling. Um, just a great overall performance. So a great job, Ellen. Well done. Scots were hairy, Wallace bled. Scots and Bruce has often led. Welcome to your gory bed or to victory. Now's the day and now's the hour. See the frontal battle lower. See you approach proud Edward's power. Chains and slavery. Wha will be a traitor knave? Wha can fill a coward's grave? Wha see bases be a slave? Let him turn and flee. Wha for Scotland's king and law? Freedom's sword will strongly draw. Freemen stand or freemen fall. Let him follow me. By oppressions, woes and pains, by your sons and servile chains, we shall drain our dearest veins, but they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low, tyrants fall in every foe, liberties in every blow, let us do our deed. Hi everybody, um, Craig Pike here uh, with the adjudication for the poetry seven and under. Now we had two uh, entrants into this uh, category um, and I just want to say a big thank you uh, to both George and Robin. Um, it, was, it was great fun watching both of your entries so thanks so much uh, to both of you for the work that you put in to, to rehearsing these and preparing them. Um, it's not easy at all uh, performing to a screen uh, at any age um, but really well done to, to both of you George and Robin. George, um, a heel and coo, well you definitely made me think you were a heel and coo. Uh, I loved the actions, I loved all of this, um, it was great to see, great to watch and you did it with a lot of confidence and confidence is probably one of the most important things when you're performing, again at any age, but particularly when you're young, um, confidence is what you really need to set you on the road to keeping performing. So George, you had tremendous confidence for a heel and coo, great actions, well delivered and a cheeky wee smile as well. Robin, up on a hill. Um, it was obviously a, a short piece, um, but again, you did it full of enthusiasm and confidence. So a big well done to you, Robin. Um, and I know that you're going to keep on and keep on and keep on keeping on um, as you uh, get older as well. So thank you both to George and Robin. In second place, we have Robin. And in first place, with a healing coup, we have George. Well done. Moo, 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 I'm a healing coo with four horns, used for a heart, and a royal view, and then I eat sweeties, all scary, all new. Moo, 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 I'm a healing coo. On to the juniors now, and when you get to the juniors, I'm looking for a bit more overall kind of musical performance, um, really having separate styles between each tune. And um, yeah, nice dynamics, intonation, all that kind of thing should start to be coming together by now. And um, a couple of things I'd just like to go over uh, for the junior um, competitors is 
kind of a little bit of performance and stagecraft. So I know we're all on video and how tricky it is to get the video set up right, but you should treat the video as if you were on stage. And when you go on stage, you want to present yourself to the audience and give them the best sound from the instrument. So on the fiddle, um, we want the fiddle to face the audience and it's the same on the video. So if I'm playing to you, I'd stand my fiddle out to the side and facing the audience to give a nice view. You don't want it to be standing like this um, with your back towards it, the sound won't be as good. You don't want to have your fiddle half off or not being able to see your bow hand. I had a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I had a few uh, videos that could have just been set up a little bit better. So just take a little minute, watch it back and make sure that all of your fiddle is in the, in the camera. Um, what I will say is that we had a lot of good speaking introductions and it is difficult to speak into the camera and on stage and it's a great thing to practice so well done um, for announcing your tune so clearly. So um, to go on in third place for the juniors I had Kitty so well done we had you had good use of your bow and the dynamics came through and um, a couple of intonation slips just to, to keep an eye on um, Good tempo in your march and really clear triplets for your reel. Um, so well done for that. Just think about where the camera is and, and performing out, playing out good projection. So well done, Kitty. In second place, I had Angus. Um, this was good. It was nice musical feel to this set. Um, ornaments worked well in your march. Um, good grit. I like good grit in the stress base and, and that came through in the scotch snaps. You want to really dig in. But I think you should dig in a little bit more at the start. So really set up your stress bay nice and strong with the first bit. Um, and um, you can play your tunes through twice for the competition or for a concert. It just gets you settled into the tune a bit more, gives you more opportunity to do dynamics and contrast through it. But nice, well played, put together set. So well done, Angus. And the winner for the juniors is Maisie Henderson. Um, this is a really musical performance right from the first tune. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that one. Dynamics came through nice and clear. Um, in the slower, there was good uh, kind of tempo. So rubato kind of push pull, keep you in suspense a little bit and push forward. So that, that came across really well. Um, one thing to, to think about in all, all the playing is really sustaining the notes right to the end of the phrase. So when you're playing, um, especially in long notes, what you want to do is to use your bow in the lower half or the first bit, whether it's up or down bow, but to use your bow in the first part of the note and save yourself more in the second part. So if I'm trying to sustain a note, you want to save it at the bottom for the long bit and then you've got some at the end. What happens is if you use too much, first of all, you're left trying to sustain a note on the tip of your bow, which isn't very strong and it's really difficult to do. So think about saving your bow at the start of a note and then you've still got some right at the very end. And um, that just gives it a bit more intensity at the end of the stress bay, at the slow air, sorry. Um, good stress bay, think about up-driven bow as well as a down-driven bow. Um, that's really important um, for the stress bay playing, so um, have a think about putting in that and a nice swingy reel. So well done Maisie and well done all the competitors for this one. Um, great sets and some really lovely tunes. <laughs> Oh,
Hi there, Craig Pike here with the adjudication for the 13 and under poetry reading. Now, um, we had two entries here, we had Kirsty and we had Ellen. Now, Kirsty was first, and Kirsty, your uh, piece was all about Keith. Now, you had great accent, you know, great accent and great diction. You had really good character as well, really, really good character and delivery, and it makes me want to gang to Keith. And that's the most important thing. You made me want to gain to Keith. So if ever there was a, an advertisement, a use of marketing for the town of Keith, it was the delivery of your poem. So thank you very much for that. Um, great pace of delivery, as I say, good character, and uh, your accent and diction spot on as well. So thank you for that, uh, Kirsty. Then we had Ellen with the address to the, ha the Haggis. Now, the address to the haggis is um, is a brave choice, let me put it that way, because it's a poem that many, many people know. Many people have recited it, I've recited it. A, you know, many of the people watching will have recited the address to the haggis. So it was a brave choice, but you pulled it off brilliantly. Um, very, very good. A confident delivery. A great a choice. Um, and with this one, it is all in the delivery as well as the accent because there is so much that you can put into the expression, the actions um, for something like the Address to the Haggis because it needs to be physical. It is a physical performance, the Address to the Haggis. So it was uh, very, very well done. And, and I'm sure that if you haven't done it at a burn supper already, then you'll definitely be, be booked up to do it at some point in the not too distant future. So thank you to you, Ellen, for, for that. That, um, based on the, the, the delivery of the two poems that we had today, Kirsty, uh, you're in second place, you're in second place, but well done. And Ellen, you're in first place with the address to the haggis, which was just terrific. But like I say, very well done to you both. Thanks. Fair fire on his sonsy face, great chieftain o' oh, the pudden race, a boon the ma you tack your place, pinch tripe. Or thern, weel are you wordy, o a grace, as lang's my arm. The groaning trencher there you fill, your herd is like a distant hill, your pain would help to mend a mill, in time o need. While through your pores the dews distill, like amber bead. His knife see rustic labour dicht, and cut ye up with ready slicht, trenching your gushing entrails bricht like on a ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sicht, warm reeking, rich. Then horn for horn they stretch and strive, till tack the hindmost on they drive, till other ah, wheel swelt kites belive are bent like drums. Then old good man must like to arrive, be thank it hums. Is there that o'er his French ragout, or oil that would stasu, or fricassee, would mock her spew, a perfect scunner, looks down with sneer and scorn for view on sick a dinner. Poor devil, see him o'er his trash, as freckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank a guid whip lash, his never knit, through bloody floods or field to dash, oh how unfit. Ah, but mark the rustic hag is fed, the trembling earth resounds his tread, clapped in his wally never blade, he'll mark it whistle, and legs and arms and heads will sned, like taps o' thristle. Ye powers by mark mankind your care, and dish them out their billow fair, Ah, Scotland want nae skin cam wear that japs and luggies. So if you wish a grateful prayer, gear a haggis. This is the adjudication for the junior instrumental section. And unfortunately, we just had one competitor here. But it's all about quality, not quantity, because Kirsty, this was very, very good. It was a really well presented video and lovely to hear a selection played on the piano, especially as there's not a lot of piano music for Scottish music. Piano music, printed music for <laughs> Scottish music available. And if you've done this yourself, all credit to you. Really good. We just would like to see a lot more people doing it. In the slow air, well that was very nice with good dynamics, you could have maybe varied the left hand rhythm a little bit more to make it more fluid. 
but your chosen harmonies were good. Then an excellent change to orange and blue, played in a lively fashion that would be good to dance to, with a very well executed Scotch snap. You certainly grasp the idiom here. Now you then changed to Loch Ruin, but you played it in much the same kind of tempo as um, your orange and blue, more like a Strasby, when in fact Loch Ruin is actually a march and there should be double the rhythm going on in the left hand. You played like this. <laughs> But of course, if you're not being guided by a teacher, you wouldn't know that. So well done. And I awarded you first place, obviously, with 86 marks. Well done, Kirsty. And keep doing this. Keep playing your Scottish music.
buy some cooter's candy. Mommy gave me my swift agent. Here's our cooter coming soon. We are basket on his crew selling cooter's candy. Ali Bali, Ali Bali be sitting on your mommy's knee, greeting for a wee baby to buy some cooter's candy. Poor wee genie's looking off a fin, a vicko beans cover her wee skin. Now she's getting a wee double chin, we soaking cooter's candy. Ali Bali, Ali Bali be sitting on your mummy's knee, greeting for a wee baby to buy some cooter's candy. The next competition was named in memory of the fantastic Ian Middleton, and it's one or more verses of a poem to be written in Doric by a child of primary school age. It can be on any subject but it must be the child's own work. The judge for this competition was Judge Jim Brown from Fetter Cairn and he commented, Many thanks for inviting me to judge. It has been an honour to help. So in third place, we had an equal third with Dana Wilson with Being at Home and Josh Heckler, The Healing Coup. In second place, it's Louisa Watt with The Scunner of Lockdown. And in first place, we'll hear it now, is Rowan May Blake, aged 11, with My Wee Sister. My Wee Sister by Rowan May Blake. I came down the stair in my nicht goon, far I met my wee sister Boone. What's the matter? I asked in a cherry tone. I cannot reach the telephone. Cannot reach? Did I be daft? I'll come and give you a hand. She wandered Ben after me to ask me for a hand. Five Mondays had gone by for my wee sister began to greet. Come here anew, it can I keep. I went to tell my friend and speak. On to the 12 and unders. It was great to see a few more entries for this and I really enjoyed listening to the sets. Um, so well done everybody for putting in the time and effort. And a um, couple of things just generally looking at all of your performances, things that stuck out was um, where you hold your fiddle and your bow. And two things to just go over that, I said in the younger group as well, but it's important all the way through, is to make sure that your fiddle is further out on your shoulder. So it should be going out from your ear almost. Reasons for this is if you have your fiddle too much in front of you, although it's easier to see what's going on and it might feel a little bit comfier, your elbow here gets sucked into the side of your body and you don't have enough room to move, which affects your whole hand. So if you just move your fiddle slightly further out, um, this opens up the space here and it gives this part of your hand and arm much more room to be in tune and help your intonation. Also, just on that same, same thing, if your fiddle's too far in, your bow has to come in as well and it's not got enough room to move. So opening up your fiddle helps your bow arm as well. And just one more thing before I move on to the results in your bow arm, be careful that you've got a nice straight curve um, in your arm. I always like to say it's like a truck driver that's leaning out the window. So you don't want your arm to be like a swan. You don't want it too much the other way. So just nice and relaxed and straight all the way down your hand there when you're playing. So that's that's a couple of things just to go over. But um, just go straight on to the results now. So in third place I've got Emma Cameron. So well done Emma. Um, I enjoyed the set. Uh, you had a really good stress bay, nice grit there, which I like to like to hear. Um, just a couple of things to work on is you could add more dynamics. There were some, but give give more contrast, and um, just the same sort of thing. Keep in the middle of your bow a little bit more as a base point when you're playing, and then you can use longer bows from there rather than getting at the tip too much. But well done, Emma. In second place, we've got Jaden Moore. Um, so well done, Jaden. It was a musical performance, this, um, so that really came across well, which I like to hear. And nice steady tempo, so there wasn't anything that was rushing, or, um, so that, that was good. Same thing before, just fiddle out and more contrast in your dynamics. Uh, 
And that brings us on to the winner, which is Mimi Spence. So, uh, very good play in this one. Um, very musical. I really liked the joints. There had been some thought put into them. And uh, the ornaments in the march came across well. It was nice and swingy. And um, yeah, really enjoyed this set. Nice playing, nice musical playing. So, um, well done for the 12 and unders. Craig Pike here. Um, now we are on to the poetry for the senior uh, folks um, and we had five uh, entrants here as well which uh, you know, I have to say first of all that I really enjoyed listening to all five. Um, the thing that was great about them as well was they were all very different. They were all very different in their content and their subject matter and they were also different in their delivery which I have to say made my job off a hard. Um, however, let's say uh, go through them. So Gary, uh, Gary Cool, Tia Fert, Tia Fert, Tia Fert. Um, the accent uh, was terrific. Uh, this <laughs> this really made me laugh. Um, it appealed to my sense of humour. I have to say, um, which is always good. Um, it was very expressive, bearing in mind the content. Uh, and very funny indeed. So I really enjoyed uh, listening to this one, Gary. Um, it was clear that you'd put an awful lot of work into the preparation of it. 
Um, and uh, thank you, thank you for that. Um, Gary Stewart, uh, matrimonial bliss. Uh, well, if ever there was a less, <laughs> if there were ever a story to be told about matrimonial bliss, it's this one by Ian Middleton. Now, Ian uh, Middleton's material is some of my favourite Doric material. Um, I haven't delivered this one myself. Uh, I've done some of his other uh, poems and songs, um, but this one is great. The language uh, is superb, and that is the case with so much of Ian Middleton's uh, material. The writing is so good. Uh, you can really deliver, you can really enjoy the delivery of the language with this one. And there's such a, 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 a distinctive metre that you, you've got to follow as you're delivering it as well in terms of how Ian Middleton writes. Um, which you which you did uh, very very well, Gary. So thank you for that. And the accent was spot on. <laughs> Not much more I can say about that. Um, but uh, thank you for that, uh, Gary. Iona, um, Iona Fife with the tale of Wee Geordie. Um The thing about your performance, Iona, was it 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 really came across so natural. Um, I really felt you were telling a story. As though I was sitting in your living room listening to you telling a story. Um, it, it was so well delivered um, from that side of it, and and expression and use of the language was 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 excellent. Um, so thanks again for the, clearly the work that had been put into that as well. I really felt you you performed that as a story, um, which as a listener I enjoyed. Kenny Veach with the spree, um, very well delivered. Came across very natural for sure, um, very expressive, and again, I felt you were really trying to tell a story. The bonus was that there was a chuckle through that. <laughs> I really chuckled uh, my way through that, um, so thanks for making me laugh. Um, uh, it's a piece I'd never heard before, I have to say, never heard it before, and I also liked the setting for your delivery of it as well. So uh, thanks for obviously putting put, putting some. A thought into that too. And then finally we had Neil MacDonald with Strathnaver, which was so different to the other uh, items. Um, very poignant, uh, quite different as I say, quite different in terms of tone, in terms of style, in terms of delivery, um, but it was very thoughtfully de delivered, which um, I, I, I appreciated very much. Uh, you are making the most of the narrative because it is such an important narrative to be told. Um, excellent diction and pace, um, and as I say, that, that pace and delivery was entirely appropriate to the story as well. Uh, so Neil, thank you for giving me something just a wee bit different as well. One other observation that I, that I will make, of course, and I'm, I'm probably stating the obvious, and you've heard this before, um, is that it is, it's nay easy to do uh, what you're doing in terms of performing to a screen. Um, anybody who performs, um, who delivers poetry, sings a song, puts on a sketch, whatever it is, you are used to audience feedback. That is such an important part of your performance. It's not just down to what you do, but the more feedback you get from the audience, your performance lifts. And I think all of us, me included, you know, Everybody who is used to some type of live performance, whether it's delivering a speech, a poem, singing a song, you know, in a village hall or an HMT, whatever it is, we have missed that audience feedback, which helps to fuel and lift our own performance when it's happening live. So for all of our performers um, who have delivered material, as part of this festival, you know, I commend you all because, like I say, this is not easy to do. Um, so, so thank you and well done for for doing that. Anyway, um, the adjudication, as it were, in third place, a uh, Gary Cool with Tia Fert. Um, you really made me chuckle. So thanks very much indeed for that, Gary. In second place, we have Kenny with the spree. I really enjoyed the way that you put that item across. Um, it came across so expressive. And again, the bonus was it made me chuckle throughout. Uh, and finally, in first place, uh, Iona Fife 
with Wee Geordie. Um, you picked the post for me, Iona, because of the very natural delivery. I really felt you were telling me a story. Um, I felt like I was just sitting with you and you were just telling me the story, um, which I enjoyed. So thank you very much, Iona, and well done. But to all of you, thank you and well done. We Geordie, a countryman born and bred, was more than content with the life that he led. With his ferrets and snares, he was kent far and wide as a best rabbit trapper and diver inside. The locals for long had been trying to match him, and Fat Annie for years had been trying to catch him. But Curtin to Geordie was near in his plans. With his footprints, he felt he didn't nuke on his hands. But day Saturday night coming home by the hall, he was teen by the steer of the annual ball. And though the do was a function for collar and tie, he decided to tack a bit squinty and by. We towered in his legs to block off on he leaks. He'd drop at the footed, he'd first do his breeks. I'd hunted a boot till it settled at ease in a spotty half wide between his waist and his knees. With a bar in the holly, the da had a sup. The fleer was fair hobbling, the rabdy was up. Apart from Fat Annie, the only wild fleur, like a twalstein blind lump looking out for a cure. She was boasting her courage and vodka in line, for she spotted with Geordie and wasted no time. Afore he could dodge her or duck in a neath, he was into her oxter and fechting for breath. They sailed in a flare to a waltz country dance, We Geordie held tech in the throuser romance. But the thought of the foot, it was wheeled to the fore, with the pressure I on kind, the crater would s'more. Say so he gied a bit shockle to get it to shift, and was thankful when sidewise it started to drift. It was then that Fat Annie let loose with a screech as it crawled up his leg like an achting inch flech. Wheel twa hunter heeds furled to see if it was wrong, and Geordie reed faced in a ken for to gang. He didna see Annie let loose with a crack, and the neest thing he kent he was flat on his back. Amid the confusion and general row, a hand sneaky tower and loused the bit tow. The women reacted like rats up a spoot, like a scarlet stampede for the foot to it come out. When its feet got a grip on the slippery fleer, it changed it a second and into top gear, ignoring completely the scarled serenade, it shot out a sect among box lemonade. Well, the women were at the windies outside, and the vote was unanimous, it was there that they'd bide. The band, fair and dry in the brack for the ball, played Pop Goes the Weasel, sang Double Twa Fall. But Geordie recovered and crawled in pursuit, in a nae time at all he had triced it to doot. But as soon as it was catched, he set off down the road, and fear that fat Annie micht up and reload. To this day he gets raged and files as a row, and he never discover fat titted the tow, and Annie, still keen on him, money time quips. I'd feel mere secure, Gin you bicycle clips. This is the adjudication for the instrumental group. And we had here four very good ensembles, all fiddle groups. The tuning was really good in all cases, with a variety of different styles. And considering you were all playing in your own homes or by yourself, I thought the ensemble was really excellent. Well done for that. I like the way the youngsters introduced their sets. So, um, first of all, I heard the junior arc fiddles, and it was a sensitive intro from the piano and the slow air well executed. Uh, you were very well together, but maybe try and uh, vary the texture with the use of harmony here and there, because some of the other groups did do this, and it was successful. So that's the junior arc fiddlers. The arc fiddlers, your slow air was tastefully played with nice harmonies and I liked the way it grew in depth before a well-controlled rallentando. A lively jig, again a full sound with good use of dynamics, strong playing from a very good ensemble. The wee arc fiddlers, that was a fine rendition of the Rowan Tree and make sure your F sharps are absolutely in tune. Angus MacLeod, it was played a wee bit on the cautious side for the tempo but it was confident and well played together. Kate Dalrymple was again just too slow for a reel, but it was accurately played and I would go for accuracy any time. Then we had the mature Strasbourg fiddlers of the Aldings. This was a beautifully executed slow air 
with lovely tasteful piano accompaniment throughout. Very well balanced, excellent use of harmonies. Very good change to the Strathspey, which had a great tempo. You could have maybe added some more harmony, but it finished with a lovely controlled rallentando. So I really enjoyed this class. And in first place, the mature Strathspey fiddlers with 88 marks. Then we had the arc fiddlers with 86, the junior arc fiddlers with 85, and the wee arc fiddlers with 84. So thank you very much to the Keith Festival for inviting me to adjudicate. I'm just sorry I can't be with you in person, but maybe next year.
Murray Competition is a poem or prose jointly written by people of different generations in Scott. It can be children, young or old, and they should enlist the help of anyone from a different generation. So that could be parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties, cousins, or even friends to help with the passing on of the Scots language throughout the generations. Our judge this year was Moira Stewart, and her comment was, I was delighted to be asked. It was a very difficult job and I enjoyed reading all the entries. The winning entry that she has chosen was an excellent poem, very descriptive and draws you right in to the story. Very well done. So the results for the Charles Murray competition in third place was Rowan May Blake and her granny Caroline with the poem Keep Her Gone. In second place, it was Amy and her granda Ian Johnston with the poem Bide at Hame. And in first place, it was Patrick Hutchison and his father Willie with the poem Tay the Mester. Aye, aye, fit like. Uh, this was written for James Scott Scannell, the Star Spy King. He was born on the 5th of August 1843 and he died on the 17th of March 1927. And he's still considered to be to, to this very day to be one of the most influential fiddlers in Scottish traditional music. Now, here's who the verses are come about. He and Echter guy puckle years ago now, me and the old man were sitting in the Scotty, listening to a tape of Hector McCandrew playing Scott Skinner. And Mick you now that is a match just made in heaven. A master playing the tunes composed by the other master. After hence, my father said, as a boy the boy, that it would be like standing on the stage and be able to play like that. At this, there was a splitter to get some paper, and after a wreck in the cupboard for mother keep it her cooking boogies, I got some paper and a pencil, and between us the following verses came out. To the master. I wish I could play the fiddle like Skinner, the bank's a high level, but I just and I in the of the finger to play till the sparks for the fiddle fair flee and the strings in the bow melt in front of my eye. Oh, what it would be if I could do that. Stir spies in my reels, I'd mark it a crack. The bow in is perfect, the skinner himself. The audience just sitting there, caught in my spell. On seeing their stairs and the glaze in the rain, are these off a wee, so I'd not call them Dean. Finally recovered. And a bit near come tea. I give him a slow air, but maybe play three. The hairs on their necks like a burst of a cut, and the tears for them fleeing, leaving Ronald's aside. Then I guard him jump for the bait, and hit him full square with his spy in a spade. My fingers are blurred as he pass all the strings, the bow gun as fast as creating a win. But I'm near finished. I've near reached the best. The twa variations, they'll be the test. Folkies are lying, they've dwam clean awa, and musicians are greeting, putting their fiddles in twa. Others are cuddled up and lying on the floor, and skill. He's the greatest in twa hundred year. I stood away for it and going down an A&E, but nae notes are missing. I'm the greatest, you see. The goff for singed horse hair comes from my bow. If a gang's only fast, that'll bust in a low. Skinner, Gow, Marshall and McAndrew and R. We cheer for the sidelines, if they weren't a war. But ah, I'm just dreaming. I can nae play a note. With fingers like mine, it would be a gay yoke. But mechty, I wish to play like all Skinner. The bank's a high level, but I'd just hang the finger. Well, I'll have to stop fickling with this fancy fickings, and get on with the vrocht, from yards to dell, and trees to fell, and a hundred more jobs for boys. So I'm about to get yogurt. So, that's all for you now, and see and take care, and all the best. Okay, and we're now on to the, the last group of the traditional singing, so it's the seven and unders. Um, I think this might be my favourite one to judge, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> there's some really great singers in there, some really great performances, so it was really, really nice to watch. Um, so we'll just start in third place again, and that's going to go Best Cool. 
um, who sang Ali Bali. Um, it was a really good performance, um, very tuneful, she seemed to be enjoying herself um, and it was really good, so very, very well done, Bess. Um, in second place is James Weir, um, who sang Three Craws. Um, and he really kind of sold the, the performance as he was singing it. He kind of told the story, did little actions, um, and it was really nicely sung. So very, very well done, James. Um, and then in first place, I've got Isabel Tierney, um, who sung on the Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond. And it was just a beautiful performance. Um, really nice tone in her voice, um, very tuneful nice use of phrasing um, and just overall a really really great job so well done Isabel or uh, Isabella sorry okay excellent I'll tag the high note and you tag the low note and I'll be in Scotland before yeah me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny bunny banks of Loch Lomond. All the entries up, they did a great job. Um, the word perfect, mostly. Um, some managed fine without an audience. Some probably could have been done with the audience to do them along a wee bit. Eh? But very game for ten in your entries and it was really, really um, great to, to judge. So, when I was judging, I couldn't, I understood that, that um, under different circumstances I might have gotten a different performance. But I couldn't really judge on that. I just had to judge on what I seen. Um, and just to, to judge on the entries that I had and the performances they gave me on a remote basis. We also had one or two duplicates this year, which is quite um, rare for a both a ballad competition. But it was actually quite fine to see different versions of the same song, different interpretations. So, for a judge's point of view, it was just fine. The choice of song for Abdi was was appropriate. Um, they were all both the ballads, and so therefore Abdi scored well on their choice of song. Like due to circumstances, some of the liveliness and the feeling was missing. Um, some of your timing and phrasing was different and maybe your tone and pitch was lost in some places. But if you had an audience in front of you, if you had you know, a wee bit of a um, few drums maybe, a friendly smile to keep you going, and just that feeling of enjoyment and appreciation, it must have been a different performance. So, on to the results. The traditional Bothe style was the, in my opinion, the winner. So, in third equal place, we had Shona Donaldson with Jock Bruce of the Fornet and John Dixon with Drumdelgi. In second place, and very, very close behind the first place, we had Sandy Thompson with the Herstarity. In first place, first place, excellent, well deserved, Doug Hay, we drum Delgi. So thank you very much, Abdi. Um, hopefully, we'll see Abdi in a competition next year. But thank you very much for inviting me to judge the competition. As I said earlier, it's been a great privilege, a great honour, and well done to Abdi for taking part. Thank you. There's a firm tune up in Kearney, aye, it's kent be far and wide. To be cut the hush of drum delgi, aye, upon sweet never inside. The fair maroy on muckle tune, he is both hard and sair. And the callest wind that ever blows, his servants get their share. Now it's five o'clock, we quickly rise and hurry down the stair. It's there to corn our horses eye and likewise struck in their hair. If they're half an hour in the stable, aye, each day the catchy goes. To get started, they were breakfast, which is generally brews. Well, we've scarcely gotten our brews, we'll sup and gin our pints at eye. 
When the grievous has come a one who lads the time is drawn nigh. At six o'clock the mills put on to give us a strict work. It takes six of his to mock to let the leak a ring were sark. I and fin the water is put off were back on doon the stair. They put some quarters through the fan till daylight disappear. Fin daylight is begin to peep and the sky begins to clear. The grieve rose out come a one who you'll be no longer here. For the socks a yell gain to the plough and fire to car the neeps. Or you know the loons will be after a we stray rep through their quits. I and fin that we were gyan forth and turn an out the yoke. The drift dung on so very thick that we was like the choke. The frost it was so very hard the plough she would na go. And so we filled were muck herds among the frost and snow. New drum Delgie's horse are young and sma, the shafts they barely fall. And it fails it needs yon siddler's chains to help them up the hill. But we will sing where horses praise, though they be young and sma. For they far outshine yon broadland ains that gang say fall and bra. New drum Delgie keeps a Sunday squeal, he says it is but recht. To teach the young and the ignorant to see the gospel light. Well, ye darna swear about the tune, it is against the law. And if you use profanities, then you'll be pitting a war. Well, the term time is coming round, and we will get our brass. And we'll had a one to Huntley Fair to hay a part and glass. I will head into Huntley Toon and gang upon the spree and sign the fun that will commence the lassies fan we see. So it's fair you will drum delgy for I'm and gang awa. It's fair you will drum delgy your witty wither and awe. It's fair you will drum delgy I will bid you adieu. And I'll leave you for a fun ye are, a missed unseeable crew. For the senior, I'm looking for just an overall really polished performance. Um, very confident with your instrument, using all the dynamics, good intonation, different styles in the tunes, joins, the whole works. <laughs> and we had some great performances uh, in the senior, so thank you very much. And, and well done to everybody for putting in. A um, couple of things that stood out that I'd just like to go over briefly um, are to do with vibrato and contact uh, to do with tone in the bow. So I'll start with going over vibrato. Um, so in the seniors this should be fairly well established and you're comfortable using it and what we can start to uh, experiment with now is different types of vibrato so it's not just an on off switch you can use it throughout one note to, to make it more intense or less intense or just give it a bit more colour. So for example, if I'm just playing a, a straight note, we could start with a really wide, slow vibrato and then by the end, we can speed it up and make it more intense uh, to change the colour of the note by the, by the end, to lead into the second half, for example, to, to help your phrasing. So here we go. So it's a great tool to have. So I think more people can start experimenting with this and, and using um, different types of vibrato. The other thing I'd just like to briefly go on about is having contact. And um, when we play, everybody can play loud and there's some beautiful tone uh, quality in the senior section here. Um, but just to go over, when you're playing loud, it's nice and easy. We, we all use longer bows. <laughs> But when we go quiet, we've still got to produce a good tone. Um, I always like to say when you're playing quiet, it's just like somebody's closed the door, but it's still got the same intensity and it's still got all the roundness and, and the quality there. So when you're playing quiet, 
always have contact. If you don't have enough contact, you get what I call wispy notes. And my pupils are all uh, fed up with me going on about wispy notes. But it sounds like... It's not quite as full. And you just need to fix that by sinking in a little bit more with your bow and making sure that your pianos, your softs, are as good a quality as your louds. So without further ado, let's uh, go through the top three. So in, in third place, um, I had Cassie. Very good overall, again, just what I was saying before, overall performance, nice put together set. Very steady, good, strong start into the march, which had nice ornaments and dynamics, which came through nice and clear. Your good posture, holding up your fiddle in the right place, projecting well. Um, so that's all good points. Um, I think you could have started the Strasbe a little bit stronger, just dig in, really establish the start of that Strasbe. Um, the upbeat and the first beat, so both of those are really important notes in the join. Um, but it was good and steady, you settled into it well and a nice join into the reel with um, really clear string crossing, so I, I enjoyed that, it was well played. In second place, um, and second and first are quite close here, I, I uh, I really enjoyed both your slow airs, but in second place I've got Rosie. So very musical slow air. I liked your phrasing that came across really, really well. Um, and good vibrato, just what we were saying before about trying to vary it so you've got different types of vibrato now could really just bring that on to the next level. Um, good swingy march, great tempo for this one and nice ornaments, I enjoyed that. And a strong join into the hornpipe. Watch the tempo, the hornpipe doesn't rush too much. Um, in that second part. Um, nice left hand work and um, uh, so good overall set. So the winner of the senior um, is Rianne and this was just very musical all the way through and especially the slower. I think that was my favourite part of your set. It was um, very well played, good rubato, um, dynamics came through and the phrasing and you, you just really held the audience for this one. It showed good control. So well done for that. Um, march, nice strong join into the march. For me personally, I could have done with the march a uh, bit quicker um, just to keep keep the swing there, but ornaments and dynamics were clear and real, real had really nice uh, clean string crossings and a good steady tempo for that. So um, well played, Rianne, uh, winner of the senior.